my child when the days were accomplished that they should present me to the Lord. I offered myself and all I had to my Heavenly Father with a pure desire of pleasing Him. Although at my incarnation I had forever consecrated myself and my whole life to my Father, yet I never omitted to dedicate to Him every particular action of my life and keep in view His good pleasure. But since the good intention is a matter of such importance in the interior life that no one can be a true disciple of my heart without it, my heart did not cease to show, teach, inculcate this by its example. Look at my life from its beginning unto the end. Did my heart anywhere please itself? Did it seek the glory of the world? In all my life, child, can be found no act arising from the mere impulse of human nature. None from mere custom, none from mere necessity, none finally, whether great or small, which did not spring from the motive of filling the divine will, or of pleasing the divine majesty. How happy is he that is put on this sentiment of my heart. He is ever useful to himself, ever dear to me, he is Saviour God. What is that which is acceptable to me? The inward affection rather than the outward act the intentions of the heart rather than the fulfilment of the work. What do I reward forever? The fruit of grace whereby you are moved to act and wherewith you cooperate, not the effect of nature whereby you are stirred up or which you follow my grace moves the will to do whatever things are by me, directly or indirectly commanded or desired. These I wish to be so done that they be supernaturally good and meritorious. Therefore, to do them I give an actual grace, without which they could not be supernaturally good and meritorious. If, then, you are induced to act by my will or good pleasure, know that you are moved by grace, a supernatural principle. But the end or intention of your will forms the species of the act. Such as is your intention, such will be the act that follows. If you have a right intention, you will before and above all intend and seek my good pleasure, me your end and supreme good. It sometimes happens that the primary intention of all action is right, but that a wrong secondary intention creeps in. When this occurs, the goodness of the action indeed is not wholly destroyed, but is lessened in part, and the actor becomes guilty of so much as there has been of ill-regulated or evil will in the vitiated intention. Behold, my child, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Therefore all things must be derived from me, be referred to me. If then you would be blamed when you do not refer them to me, how much more so if you turn them aside to yourself or to my enemy, the world. A precious thing, a wonderful virtue, my child, is a right intention whereby actions, although natural and indifferent in themselves, when done by means of grace, become supernatural and meritorious, a marvellous secret whereby lead and brass, lead and brass and other metals are changed into pure gold. Beware, however, lest you fall into that quite common delusion which makes men fancy that by substituting a good intention they can render meritorious a work or action undertaken not by grace or by my will, but from the sole motive of nature, aversion or inclination or from self-will alone. Follow then with a right aim, everything begun according to my good pleasure, of what avail is a work, how great or praiseworthy, however it may outwardly appear to him that does it without a right intention. On the other hand, that which is done with a pure intention, however little and lowly it may seem, becomes excellent and altogether beneficial. Would that men knew and practiced this art of acting rightly, how easily could they merit a bright crown in heaven? There are those who work much and gain little, who busy themselves about everything, who attempt many and various things, but in the end find themselves with almost empty hands, because like irrational creatures, they act without an end, or pursue an end ill-ordered and unworthy. How many there are who exchange the fruit of their labours for an empty breath of praise or admiration, wherewith they ever long to feed their weary and hungry heart? 
Behold how many there are who make so much of the smoke of vainglory that they buy it at a price by which they might purchase for themselves the kingdom of endless glory. Is there not an endless number of such madmen? Take heed, my child, lest you be reckoned among them. There are others who appear to be doing little and yet deserve to become very holy. holy. These are they who think that he does enough who does the will of God. My child, when you devote yourself to me in exercises of piety, you must place even above these practices themselves the intention of doing my good pleasure. Thus, whether you feel consolation or desolation, you shall remain calm, gather certain fruit and honour me. If you are engaged in works of duty or charity towards your neighbour, let me be the end of those works, for thus it will happen that you shall never fail of your reward, and that you shall lose nothing of your peace, whether your neighbour be or be not improved. If you have in view no other object except my soul or pleasure, you shall be content and happy in every event, because you know that I do not demand of you, and will not crown in you, for nothing except your good efficacious will, and that success depends upon me, who orders all things according to infinite wisdom. By means of a pure intention you are enabled to remain undisturbed and tranquil amid hardships, distresses, even amid temptations themselves. For since purity of intentions, intention raises you before me above sensible things, you need not be annoyed by what you feel against your will. Finally, my child, whether you are in action or at rest, whether you labour or divert yourself, whether you are watching or sleeping, whether you eat or drink, whether in short you are doing anything else, do all things to follow my good pleasure, to be acceptable to me, and behold a great and ever-increasing amount of merit will be given to you. In the morning you must daily make a general intention, whereby everything to be done or suffered during that day is directed to this last end, that for love of me you may accomplish my will, and thus please me, this good, this holy intention will give life to all that, all things that follow, and will virtually continue to add vigour to them. It is also of the greatest importance to renew during the day your good intention before every action, even more when it can be done conveniently to renew the same during the action, but to do all things with the right end. It will be of a, a very great help to foresee occasions of meriting dangers, meriting dangers of losing virtues to be practiced snares of pride and self-love to be avoided one and the same action may be directed to several and different proximate ends which directly or indirectly tend to the salvation of your soul or of your neighbor or to my honor hence you may acquire a great treasure of merits of which they who are act with no aim of this kind are deprived Moreover, every action may be made up of several virtues, as you practice as many virtues as you intend, and as to envy, to every act of virtue corresponds a new degree of present grace and future glory. It is easy to see how important a matter is this holy intention. But, my child, you must take care that these things be not done with anxiety, with injury to inward freedom, or with the loss of peace, for so far from being useful, they would on the contrary be hurtful. Remember lastly that inspired by the spirit of the same intention that animated me, you ought to unite all your actions and sufferings with mine. If, as a disciple of my heart, you are desirous of acting in a manner worthy of so high a vocation. My child, vain self-love is so subtle that it can easily assume any shape and thrust itself into all things. Hence it will happen and unless you be cautious, you may be animated and led by the spirit of self, rather than my own. Nor does human light or prudence suffice to distinguish this, since neither can or of itself discern things supernatural, but a light from above and the divine assistance are needed. Therefore, you must pray without ceasing that you may be enlightened from heaven, and bear fervently that you may be helped by grace, whereby you are enabled to attend rightly and singly, singularly above all things to me.